Okay, good. And they have to accept that. And looks like we are ready to go. Um, so looking back from last time, just a quick review. Um, very important. We said that, and I'm not going to go into slideshow mode because I'm just going to do a couple things here quickly. Uh, we had said that you need to know this thing um, down pat. And I said that I'm not going to go into slideshow mode. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. So this you need to have memorized already. Okay. If not, you need to go back and make sure that you remember how to increase, decrease assets, liabilities, stockholders' equity accounts like common stock and retained earnings, revenue, expense, and uh, dividends, although not shown here on this slide. Okay. So to increase, an asset account, we should do what, everyone? Debit. 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 Good. To decrease it, we will? Credit. Credit. Good. Liability to increase, we will? Credit. Credit. Excellent. To decrease, we will? Uh, debit. Debit. Very good. To increase a stockholder's equity account like common stock, we will? Credit. 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 Good. To decrease, we will? Debit. Debit, and that's the case, say, case for both common stock and retained earnings. Good. Uh, for revenue to increase, we credit. 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 <clears throat> to decrease, debit. Debit. Beautiful. Expense increase. Credit. Debit. Oh, debit. Debit. Increase in expense, we debit. Good. And to decrease, we credit. And right. then remember, Dividends worked the same way uh, as expenses, although they aren't reported on the income statement. What do we put on the income statement? Assets equals liability. Not on the income statement, no. Revenue minus expenses equal net income. Right, so the best way to kind of run that through the thought center, speech center, is to say, well, it's the income statement, so I have to report income. How do I calculate income? Revenue minus expenses. Therefore, on the income statement, report revenue and expenses, right? Um, now, expenses decrease net income, right? Revenue minus expenses. So expenses will decrease my net income. If my net income is smaller, my retained earnings is smaller. And dividends move the same way as expenses, but they're not reported on the income statement. They're reported on the statement of retained earnings as they subtract from our retained earnings, right? So we have, well, we have our piggy bank beginning balance. We add the net income from the income statement onto the statement of retained earnings. We subtract the dividend. We show them right there on the statement of retained earnings to get to the ending balance of retained earnings. And then we call the balance sheet the balance sheet because it balances. everything balances. It balances and what balances? Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. Great. So what is shown on the balance sheet? Assets, liabilities, and, and stockholders. Stockholders equity. equity, which at this point is simply retained earnings, the ending balance, and our common stock. Good. Okay, and the reason I say at this point, because we'll add more to that in other classes. Okay, excellent. Very good work, guys. Okay, make sure you are probably, you should probably be looking at this daily, you know, just to keep that right here. Okay, and then we had this chart of accounts and we need to know which accounts are assets, which accounts are liabilities, stockholders, equity, revenue, expense, et cetera. Um, so that we um, know when we see a description of a transaction, which kind of account it is, is it an asset, is it a liability, so we know if we should debit it, credit it, if it's increasing, decreasing, et cetera, okay? Uh, don't get confused. Dividends and income technically are not stockholders' equity accounts because we don't report them on the um, balance sheet, right? Income is shown as the difference between revenue and expenses on the income statement. Dividend is a subtract from the retained earnings on the statement of retained earnings. But they stuck it here because they're trying to say, well, those two accounts do affect 
retain earnings uh, because the income increases retain earnings and the dividend decreases it. Okay, so just a quick review of that. And then we had our example, okay? And um, just to remind you where we had left off, uh, we have this company, I think we said that uh, the owner of the company, right? Owners are separate from the entity under the economic entity assumption. And we said that the owner's name is Irving. That's sort of a silly little example here. But Irving starts this company called DJ Pizzazz. Okay, so during the day, he's Irving. At night, he's the DJ, DJ Pizzazz. And our business is that we're going to um, be DJs for different functions, different parties and stuff. Sometimes we go to the venue, we bring our equipment and we DJ at the person's house or wherever place they pick, restaurant, whatever for their party. Uh, and then other times we provide the facility. They come to our building, right? And uh, we host the party at our premises. So DJ Pizzazz, and guys, I'm just going to start from the beginning. I know that we talked about some of this, but I think it's worthwhile to review it again, okay? He goes and um, he incorporates, say, with the state of California, and the state of California authorizes him to issue stock, and so out of his corporation, and so what he does is he takes money from his personal bank account and puts it into the DJ Pizzazz Corporation. So if you put money into a corporation's bank account, does the cash increase? If you put money into a bank account, does the cash increase? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. If you put money into a bank account, the cash increases. And how do you increase cash? You debit it. Good. You debit it. So we go ahead and we debit the cash. And remember... We know that this is a debit because it is indented to the left. Debit to the left, credit to the right. Now, DJ, I mean, Irving has just given up control of that cash. It's now in the corporate accounts. If he were to hire a treasurer or something, the treasurer would have the authority to start spending that money. So DJ wants to show, Irving wants to show that he has some control over the operations of that corporation. So the corporation issues stock back to him. When the corporation issues stock, now they have to show that there are owners out there in order for the balance sheet to balance. We have to show that our common stock is now outstanding. And so our common stock account will increase. So we go ahead and we do what? We want to increase a stockholder's equity account, common stock. To increase the stockholder's equity account, you credit it. Debit to the left, credit to the right. Debits must always equal credits or our balance sheet won't balance when we get done with this whole thing. So we go ahead now and we first enter the transaction in the journal. Second, we post it to the ledger. Okay, so we have these transactions in the journal. That's our first transaction. So we put the number one next to it. We walk over to the ledger and we post it okay and when we post the debit to cash debit on the left credit on the right for that first transaction we debit it and when we do our cash account now shows a million dollars works we're now showing that we have a million dollars in our cash account in our ledger and then you come over you find your common stock account and your stockholders equity there it is I post that credit. Notice both have the number one. I post that credit. Now I have a million dollars sitting in my common stock account. Okay. Now, don't write this down. You don't have to write this down. But I'm going to go ahead and just prepare myself on the side here. A quick little balance sheet. What's on the balance sheet? Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. I look at my ledger and of course you have to sort of pretend that this other stuff hasn't happened yet. And do I have any assets? Cash. Cash, million dollars, good. Okay. 
Excellent. Okay. At this point, I don't have any other assets. It's just the cash, right? I look at my liabilities. And at this point, just pretend this other stuff hasn't happened. I don't have any liabilities. So my liabilities are zero. Do I have any stockholders' equity accounts? Ah, yes. I have an amount showing what? Showing a million. common stock, a million dollars. Good. So I put my common stock. I'm going to abbreviate that CS here, guys. Million dollars. Balance sheet balances, right? Again, making sure that your debits equal your credits as you go through and make entries in the journal and post them to the ledger will ensure that at the end of the day, the balance sheet is going to balance. Okay. All right. Any question? Okay. So we get that. And then DJ says, well, Irving says, well, I need a building because sometimes I'm going to have people come to the facility that I provide for my uh, for whatever function they're doing right so uh, he finds a building in a good part of town for parties there's restaurants there's other places to go and hang out after it's good access you know good parking around there and stuff so he says yeah this is the building right so he goes to the guy and he's silent in the building the guy's asking 1.2 million and Irving says, gee, I don't have 1.2 million. Will you take a million? The person says, no, 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 no. I've got people lining up for this building. I I'm sticking firm to my price. He says, I'll tell, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the 1.2 million. I'll give you a million cash up front. And then I want to pay you on time for this 200,000 that I would still owe you. The guy says, okay, I'll bite that. At least I'm getting a million cash up front. The guy says, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so... We now have a bill. We have a what liability? We have a mortgage payout bill. Okay. So what happens? We go ahead and we debit the building for the full 1.2 million. Okay. We're taking over that building. If something were to happen in that building the next day, right? It would be our loss. On the good side, that would be the bad side. So that would be the risk that we're accepting. The reward that we're getting is what? That we can throw our functions at this building. We can do whatever we want with it, right? Because we own the building. We can you know, put different paint on the wall and everything because we own it. So we have all the risks and rewards of that. So we take the building for the full 1.2 million. We go ahead, we debit our building. Now we're showing in our assets and our ledger account that our building uh, was purchased for 1.2 million. We, of course, have to credit the cash. No, it's not going to go back. It's going to fight me now. So I am going to, the only way I know to affect this change at this point is to close the stupid thing and open it again. Really? Really? Okay. okay, so what happens? We have to debit the building for 1.2 million. So we go ahead and do that in the ledger. Okay, that's that second transaction. We're going to give up the cash now. So we have to do what? We have to credit the cash because our cash is decreasing. To decrease cash, you credit it. We post that credit to the cash account. And yeah, now the cash account is showing zero because we gave up the cash, right? And we have to credit what? Debits have to equal credit. So we have to credit something. We credit mortgage pay a bill because now we know that we um, owe this guy the 200,000 that we'll be paying in the future. So we go ahead, we post that second journal entry, number two journal entry to the ledger here in the liability. And now we're showing that we have 200,000, a mortgage pay up bill. So if I were to go back and prepare my balance sheet now, you don't have to write this part down. How much cash do I have? If you never, if you ever not sure, you just look at your ledger and see what you have. How much cash do I have right now? 
Zero. None. Zero. Okay, so the cash is zero. Let's go start that. So the cash is zero. Okay, that's zero. That's not the pig's nose. That's zero. The cash is zero. That's going to start that now. So the cash is zero. Just pretend there's a zero there, okay? And my what? My building. Now, when I look, you always just look to see what's in the ledger as 1.2. So I go ahead, put that in 1.2. Do I have any liabilities now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I got that mortgage payable. So I go ahead, put that in. $200,000. Okay. And what do you know? My balance sheet balances assets building 1.2 equals liability plus stockholders equity, which is 1.2. So the total balances. Okay. Okay, good. So we go ahead now and we continue on. And remember, sometimes we are going to go to wherever our customers are saying they're having their function. So we need a vehicle. So Irving walks in to the dealership, sees this beautiful, really cool, you know, van that he can bring all his stuff. It's fancy looking, you know, it's a Mercedes van or whatever. <clears throat> and so he comes in and he says, uh, gee, I really would like to acquire this. I see you want 150,000 for it. I don't have any cash. Can I owe you? Can I have a account open here? And so the car dealer checks his credit and says, yeah, okay. No, you don't have to give me any cash up front. Just simply sign here and you can owe me the 150,000. So I go ahead and since I'm taking control of that vehicle, if I crash it, I suffer the loss, right? If I drive out of the, the dealership there and um, you know hit a pole as I'm going out, the dealer is gonna say, the car salesman is gonna go, look what happened to your car. Okay, I own the car, I have all the risk, but I can use it as I see fit. I want to change the paint on it or something. I can't. I have all the benefits of ownership, even though I haven't paid for it yet. So I go ahead and I debit the equipment. I post that over here. And when I post that, I have my 1 million 500,000 uh, 150,000 I should say sitting in my equipment account I have to now credit that I have this liability and I'm calling this payment payable um when we get over to the ledger I'm going to be more specific and call it vehicle payable okay so I go ahead and I credit that liability my pay a bill and when I do I now see that I have this payable over here, 150,000, my third journal entry, right? Notice the numbers are consistent as you post so you know what journal entry the uh, transaction came from. So since that was that number three journal entry, notice the three there, okay? And then I could go and in my balance sheet now, I'm going to go ahead and show the vehicle for 150,000. My total assets now are what? I'm just gonna write it off to the side here, guys, because I don't feel like trying to squeeze it in, are 1,350,000 are my total assets. I now have what? Vehicle payable, 150,000. Notice my common stock is just sort of sitting there, right? Because there's been no more stock transactions. So I have liabilities of 350 plus the common stock of a million is 1,350. The balance sheet still balances, okay? And the reason the balance sheet balances is because I am making sure my debits equal my credits as I go through and uh, put these transactions in, okay? Um, Professor? Yeah. Did you, um for the assets, did you just uh, uh, sum up all the 
um, the bidding that you did. So the two two hundred or the one million two hundred thousand, and uh, I had yeah. the building for one point two, plus the vehicle for one fifty is one million three fifty, right? Okay. Yeah, that's where that came from. Okay. Okay. Good. Now I come over. And I go and I am now ready to do my first DJ gig, right? And so this particular one is one where uh, I'm going to go and uh, provide the DJ at the other person's venue, okay? So I have to hire some guys to help me lift the equipment, some lift guys and all that. And uh, they help me to get everything there get all the equipment out, set it up, do my DJ. End of the night, the person says, wow, that was great. Uh, hands me $200,000 for my services. Now, if I have provided the service, can I take the revenue? Yes. Yes. I can take that revenue because I've provided the service. So I go ahead and he hands me the cash. So to increase the cash, I debit it, debit on the left. I post that debit to my ledger. And now I'm showing that I have $200,000 cash and I can credit to increase revenue because I've just earned some revenue. My revenue went up. It's like when you get paid in a job, the amount that you earn for that year goes up, doesn't it? So I go ahead and I can credit my revenue to increase revenue. You credit it. And I'm now showing, hey, I've made 200,000 revenue this year. Okay, now I'm not gonna go and write the financial statement after every uh, single entry, I'm gonna wait till the end of my reporting period, probably the end of the year, I will come in and I will prepare my financial statement. So I just go ahead and continue on here, get all my stuff back in the truck. The lift guys get me back to my building. And at the end of the night, they tap me on the shoulder and says, that'll be $70,000, please they want to be paid they're kind of rough guys so i say "Ooh, okay and i reach into my wallet and i give them seventy thousand. if you reach in your wallet and give somebody money does your cash decrease yes yeah so i have to decrease cash as an asset i credit it credit on the left post that and that's showing me hey you got one hundred thirty thousand left right then what when these guys drive away and i say to myself nah, those guys are a little rough. I don't think I want to hire them again for any help, right? Is there any more future economic benefit as they're driving away and I'm nervously waving goodbye? No. No, there is no more future economic benefit associated with that money that I spent there. So uh, any future economic benefit has expired. So I'm going to debit what? I'm going to debit expense, okay? So I go ahead and I debit my expenses and I post that into my expense to increase expense you debit it so I post that debit and now I'm showing yeah I had 200,000 revenue 70,000 of expenses okay now that's DJ Pizzazz doing all that and so a little bit later I go and I you know take off my DJing outfit and I take off my makeup. I take off my toupee. Okay, I'm Irving again. And uh, I say, well, gee, Irving hungers, right? So uh, I, I want to go get pizza. So he goes and I want to buy some new, uh, you know, new, um, I'm going to go to the restaurant, or whatever, right? For himself, for a human being. So what does he do? He goes and he pulls $13,000 out of the corporate accounts, okay? What is he doing? He's dividing some of his earnings to himself, right? So he pulls that money out of the piggy bank. When we pull money out of the piggy bank, we call that a dividend. And to increase dividend, you debit it, okay? So I go ahead and I debit my dividend. Okay. And when I do and I post it, now I'm showing for that journal entry number six that I have paid a dividend this year of 13000 Corporations keep track of their dividend by year. How much do you spend each year on or how much do you provide? Do you divide out of earnings and dividends each year? 
So I debit for my dividend, 13,000. And since money is coming out of the corporate accounts and into Urban's personal account, I have to credit my cash to decrease it to show, hey, in the corporate accounts, there's only 117,000 left. Okay. Now, that's everything that happens for the year. I'm going to get to this process of closing. I'll explain that here in a couple seconds. But guys, forgive me. I'm going to have to uh, take two seconds here to uh, essentially blow my nose. So give me one second. Okay, sorry, a little better. Okay, so I um, am now ready. I'll do my closing entries after I prepare my financial statements, but I'm done with transactions, business transactions for the year. So now I can go ahead and prepare my financial statement. Now, when you are preparing financial statements, the first thing you will do is prepare the income statement. Okay, why do they call it the income statement? Because it shows your income because it shows the net income. How do you calculate net income? Revenue minus expenses. Good, revenue minus expenses. So I want to show something for revenue. I want to show something for expenses on the income statement. And so I just come over to my ledger and I see, okay, there's my revenue account. There's my expense account. My revenue is 200,000. My expenses were 70,000, and that's just what I put down. 200,000 of revenue minus 70,000 expenses means my net income is 130. How easy is that? Okay. Preparing the financial statement is the easiest part. I have to prepare an income statement. I know that. I'm going to do that first. I know that I have to show my net income on the income statement, and I know that income is revenue minus expenses. What do I have in revenue? Put it down. Where I have expenses, put it down, difference, net income. Good, got my first financial statement, okay? Second, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my statement of retained earnings. Now, my statement of retained earnings, remember we said is what? I'm just going to do the nose, is our piggy bank, okay? And since Urban just started the business, the beginning balance in the uh, retain earnings is zero. Okay, that's the beginning balance. And if it's going to fight me, I'm not going to. Put that up there. Come back. Try this again. Okay, the beginning balance. I was trying to say the B. It's not looking very good either. Okay, the B is what is. I'm just going to remember base. I'll do it that way. Okay. B-A-S-E. My beginning balance is zero because I just started the business. I add what? I add my net income. And all I have to do is take the net income that's showing on the income statement, right? And add it. And add it. This thing. I don't know why they make Excel so hard to draw with. I think they would have thought of it through all this. Okay. But I just take my net income and I stick it into my <clears throat> piggy bank. I add it to my retained earnings. And then what? I took some money out of the corporate accounts. If you don't, if you pay a dividend out, you haven't retained it. You haven't retained that earning. You paid it out. So I go ahead and I, the S in base, I subtract the dividend. Dividend is showing what? 13,000. So I just simply put that 13,000 there. 
I subtract it and the ending balance in my retained earnings now is showing what? 117,000. I am prepared <clears throat> to make my third statement now. Statement of cash flows is the fourth one and <clears throat> statement of cash flows will come up in another class, not this class, okay? But I'm sitting here and now I can prepare my balance sheet. Why do they call it the balance sheet? Because it balances what balances assets equal liabilities plus my stockholders equity. My stockholders equity is my common stock and my retained earnings. Okay. So I just start looking to see, okay, do I have any uh, assets? And I look and I see, okay, my cash is showing what? At this point, it's showing 117. So I simply put cash. 117. My equipment is showing 150. So I simply put equipment 150. Wait, hey, Professor. Uh-huh. Um, um sorry if you mentioned this already, but I'm not sure where the 117 comes from. 130,000 minus 13,000. Beginning balance is zero. Add 130,000, subtract 13,000, and dividend gives me 117. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's the retained earnings. Statement of retained earnings. B A S E. Oh, okay. It's Thank the you. piggy bank. It's saying we had a couple questions like this on the practice uh, exam for chapter one. We said what beginning balance, whatever you start it with, you add your net income in there. You subtract the dividend, gives you ending balance, right? Right. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Then I look. And I have my equipment is 150. So I put that down. And then I look and I say, well, do I have any other assets? Oh, yeah, I have what? I have the building. So I go ahead and I put building in there, 1.2. I look, I say, okay, I don't have any other assets. So I add that up. 117 plus 150 plus 1.2 gives me total assets of 1,467,000. Okay, good. Then I go ahead and I look at my liabilities. And so I start to look up there and I see, oh, okay, I've got a mortgage payable, 200,000. Good, I put that down. I've got a vehicle payable of 150. So I put those down, mortgage payable, 200,000, vehicle payable, 150. I look at the liability section up here on my stock, um, liability section on my um, ledger. I don't see any other liabilities, just those two. So I add those two together. 200,000 plus 150 is 350. That's my total liabilities. Now I'm ready to do my stockholders equity section. I look and I see my stockholders equity. I have what? I have my um, common stock of a million. Okay, and then I look at my retained earnings. And guys, if you have any numbers on yours, uh, please just strike those numbers out right now. Just cross out anything you're showing on yours. I fixed this for my purposes, but the one that you're uh, maybe looking at from Canvas has some numbers on there and it shouldn't have. So just take those numbers out if there's anything there, because I have not at this point yet made any entries into the retainer. I didn't debit the retainer. I didn't credit the retainer. You go back and you look at these transactions that I've gone through so far, retain earnings was never touched. But do I know what the correct ending balance of retain earnings is? Do I say know? What the, huh? Sorry, say that again. Do I know what the correct ending balance in retain earnings should be? Yes. yes. How much? 117. Good. I see it up there. I mean, I just calculated it on my statement retained earnings. So all I have to do is bring it down. I just stick it in there. 117,000. I just figured it out. I had a beginning balance. I added my net income. I subtracted my dividend. That should be the ending balance of retained earnings, 117. So I go ahead. I stick it down there. I add the million plus the 117. My total stockholders equity is 117. 
I add my liabilities and my stockholders equity together and I get 1,467,000. Does the balance sheet balance? Yes. Yes. It balances. Isn't that beautiful? No rabbits jumped out of any hats. It was simply making sure that my debits equal my credits to increase, decrease the various accounts as I went through, right? Question. This over here. Okay, now at this point though, I do have, there are no question. At this point now, I do have some housekeeping to do, okay? And that housekeeping is what we call closing entries. And this is why I have to do closing entries. And if you were kind of drifting off some other thought now, you really want to pay attention to this because this gets a little bit, got to think about this a little bit. I keep track of my income by year, don't I? I mean, if somebody asks you how much money you made, what do you say? You don't say, well, when I was two, my grandmother, I told me, I, 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 you know, I helped, I, I watered my grandmother's flowers and I heard that she gave me $20 for that. I don't remember it, but I think there was 20. And then when I was five, they gave me $50 for something. And then I got a paper route. So in the course of my life, I've made $2 million. No, you don't say that. You answer what? By year, don't you? Well, that's what corporations do. They keep track of their revenue, their expenses, their income for each year. So once I'm done preparing my financial statements, I want to turn those accounts back to zero so I can start keeping track of my revenue, my expenses in year two. Same thing with the dividend. We keep track of our dividend by year. So I'm going to make some closing entries to close those accounts back to zero. So I want to close my revenue, my expense, and my dividend accounts back to zero. And I want to make sure that what's showing on my balance sheet is my ending balances retained earnings is what the ledger shows as well. Two purposes of closing entries, turn revenue, expense, dividend back to zero. That's one purpose. Second purpose, what? make the amount showing in the ledger for the retained earnings match what it's showing on the balance sheet, in this case, 117,000, okay? Ready for that? So let's go ahead and let's start to do that. And we take a look and we see that our revenue account, when we look at revenue, right now it's showing 200,000. I want it to show what? Zero. I want it to show zero. So I have to decrease it from 200,000 to zero. How do you decrease revenue? How do you decrease revenue? Expenses. How do Credit. you decrease revenue? Huh? Debit. You debit it. Okay, good. So I go ahead and I debit revenue for 200000 and I post it to the ledger. 200,000. And when I look at the revenue account, does it show zero now? Does it show zero now? Yes. Is that what I wanted? Yes. Okay, good. So I close the revenue. I have to credit something. So what I do is I credit an account called income summary. Income summary is sort of a holding account as I go through this closing process, okay? So I go ahead and I credit income summary and income summary is kind of an interesting account because when I credit it for 200,000, it's showing me what my revenue is, right? Okay, now I wanna close my expenses. I want them to show zero. So right now my expenses are showing this what? this 70,000, I want it to be zero. So I want to decrease it from 70 to zero. How do you decrease expenses? Credit. I credit them, good. So I come back and I go to my journal and in my journal, I go ahead and I credit my expense, 70,000. I post that over to my expense 
in the ledger that credit I credited 70,000 when I credit it now the balance is showing zero is that what I wanted yes okay so if you look at these ledger accounts guys they're what there's sort of a scale that tips up or down depending on debits or credits, but for my revenue expense, I want that set back level to zero, right? Okay. Okay, good. So now I have to, I've credited my expense. I have to debit something. So in my journal, I debit that income summary account for 70. I post that debit into income summary. Okay. Okay, I post that debit into income summary. Let me get rid of that. That's, that's annoying. Okay. I said I post that debit into income summary. Okay, I forget. I'm not going to highlight it. I post that debit into income summary. When I do, now income summary is showing what? 130,000. So income summary is kind of an interesting account because it ends up showing me what is my net income. But I get that number in there by going through the process of closing my revenue and my expenses back to zero, which I've done. Okay. Now I got to close my dividend account. Okay, and so the dividend right now is showing 13. I want it to show zero. So I come over to my journal. I post in my journal the credit to dividend. Okay, and I go ahead and credit that dividend. And that closes the dividend. Okay, now, <clears throat> um, you know what? I don't like the way I did that. Uh, I shouldn't have jumped to the dividend. So rewind, forget dividend for a second because I skipped closing the income. Okay. So I'll get to the dividend in a minute. Sorry, guys. I'll get to the dividend in a minute. Just forget that for now. I have this 130000 sitting there in the income summary. But where does income go home? at night where do we put our income stockholders equity retain retain earnings stockholders equity retain earnings correct i got to put in retain earnings don't i okay good so i got to get it out of income summary and into retain earnings okay so what happens well, if I want my income to show zero, because I keep track of income by a year, and right now it's got what? A balance of 130,000 worth of credits in there. I go ahead and I debit income summary. And when I debit income summary, it now shows, God, damn this thing. It now shows what? It now shows zero. I debit it and it now shows zero, which is what I want. I have to credit something, right? I just debited income summary. So I credit what? Retain earnings. To increase a stockholder's equity account, you credit it, don't you? Right now, my retained earnings is showing zero. I want it to show what? I want it to show, and these reference numbers aren't written in the right place. I want it to show a hundred and, 30,000, okay, which that would be number nine here. And then we'll put 10 here. Okay, and so what do I do? I go ahead and when I credit it, the balance shows 130,000. But I didn't retain all of my income. Some of it I did what? Paid out in the dividend. So, I come over and I see that my dividend account now is showing what is 13,000. Let's pretend I hadn't shown you that I had to close that to zero. And so I come over and I now want to close it to zero. So I do what? I credit dividend for 13,000. When I credit it, now my dividend shows zero. I'm happy because what? 
My revenue, my expense, my dividend account is zero. My income is showing zero because I want those to be zero to start the next year. And I have to debit something. And since I take my retain uh, my dividend straight out of my retained earnings, right? I'm going to go ahead and debit my retained earnings for 13,000. And when I do that, now my retained earnings shows what? Shows 117. Is that what I'm saying the ending balance and retained earnings is supposed to be? 117? Yes. The world is in perfect harmony. I've got my ledger account showing what's showing on my statement of retained earnings on my balance sheet is the ending balance and retained earnings. My revenue, my expense, my dividend, my income summary account are back to zero. So now as I go into year two and I look at those accounts, Good. The beginning balance in revenue is zero. The beginning balance in expenses is zero. The beginning balance in income summary is zero. The beginning balance in dividend is zero. I'm happy. And I can start on another year's of transactions and prepare a second year financial statement, which we are going to do here in a couple of minutes. But I want to ask if there's a question about anything from year one. No, nothing. Okay, good, that's fine. Then what I wanna do guys is take a quick five minute break. I don't wanna uh, go too long on a break because I want you to kind of have the fires burning here uh, as we go into year two. Okay, 10 minutes. We'll do 10 minutes, I don't know who I'm kidding. Okay, 1035, okay, we'll come back at 1035. And we are going to go into uh, year two and take a look at, uh, at the information for that. Okay. Okay, guys, I'll see you in 10 minutes. I'll see you at 1035. All right. And take two, what I just said, I forgot to start the recording. Um, we're going to look at year two, and then we're going to look at a few questions from the practice midterm so you can see how what we're talking about here is going to translate into questions that you'll see on your midterm. Okay. No questions about um, year one here. Okay. All right, good. Uh, so you come over, and by the way, guys, if for whatever reason, you know, you weren't able to write in, what I put down, uh, if you look at this tab, year one complete, uh, that's with all the postings and everything uh, in there. Okay, although I see we don't have the reference numbers there, but at least you can see um, if you didn't get a chance to write in what we did with retain earnings and closing the revenue, uh, what we that was already typed in, but what we did with retain earnings, you can see it there under that tab. Okay, but let's look at year two. Okay, and once again, very important when you look at your accounts like your revenue is zero, expense is what? Zero. This would be a better way. Expense is what? Showing at zero. Okay. My income summary is showing at zero. My dividends are showing at zero. Okay. And so that's the case for all of my income statement and my dividend account. They all show zero. Okay. Then what? Then when I look at my balance sheet accounts, my balance sheet accounts carry the ending balance from last year to the beginning balance of year two. They go from year one to year two. Those balances come forward. Think about it. When you know, 12 a.m. on New Year's morning hits, your house doesn't disappear. 
your cash doesn't fly out of your wallet or out of your bank account, whatever. Okay, what you had in there at 11.59 p.m. on December 31st is sitting there at uh, January 1st of the new year, of year two. Your building is still there. Your car is still there. Your equipment is still there, right? Um, it'd be nice if our liabilities would just disappear, but no, I still owe that guy the 200,000. I still owe the car guy 150,000, okay? So what happens? Your balance sheet accounts are accounts that roll forward to that next year, okay? We call those what? Permanent accounts because whatever's in those at the end of year one, roll forward to year two, whatever the years are from 2022 to 2023, whatever. Okay. All right. So we go ahead now and we have a second year of transactions. Okay. My, my revenue, my expenses are zero because I keep track of those by year. Right. And I have my first gig of, um, you know, 2023 20, year two here. And um, in this case, a person that I have done service for before, Okay, that I trust a lot, somebody that I you know know is gonna pay, comes to me and says, Look, I don't have the cash right now, but I would like you to come and DJ my event, my party, and I'll pay you later. Would you do this? If you had a business, would you do this? Would you do this if you had a business? I'll wait if you want to think about it. I know that sometimes it's hard to make a decision like that on the snap. I'll wait. Okay, so go ahead and look at year two on your own, okay? And uh, what we'll do is we will look at the uh, practice midterm for chapter two next time when you have a little more energy. And um, did somebody raise their hand? Mal, did somebody raise their hand? What's happening? Did I do something so you guys can't talk? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, sorry guys. Go ahead. You should be able okay, to talk. Yeah, you had us um, unable to talk. It said that the host wasn't allowing anybody to. Yeah, my bad. Okay, I'm not embarrassed. Okay, all right. So let me ask that again. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> would you do this? Would you do work and agree to get paid later? Yes. You do it all the time. Yes. <laughs> you realize yes. you're not. That's what you do, right? Okay, good. So, of course, you're going to do this. You say, okay, I'll do the work and then you can pay me later. Now, sorry about that, guys. Now, what happens? Um, when you do the work, even though you're not getting paid yet, have you earned the revenue? Yes. Yeah, you earned the revenue. So, you go ahead and you what? You've done the work, so your revenue increases, so you can credit revenue. Some of these things here. Notice it lets me highlight anywhere but where I want to. Okay, so I go ahead and I credit my revenue. In this case, I got a hundred thousand for this performance for this DJing, and I go ahead and I do what I credit the revenue hundred thousand. I post that in the ledger, and I'm off to a good start for year two. 100,000 started with zero because I have to start over every year to keep track of my revenue by year. But now I got 100,000. I can't debit cash because I haven't been paid yet, but I can debit my second favorite asset account, which is accounts receivable. I say my second favorite because I'm saying cash is my favorite, but my second favorite is receivable because it is going to turn into cash, isn't it? When the person pays me. Yes. So I have future economic benefit. I debit on the left that asset, and now I'm showing, hey, I got 100,000 coming. Okay. Now, don't tell anybody, but 
I've been driving that delivery, the truck that I bring my equipment around without insurance. And I'm like, wow, what was I thinking? I got to get insurance on this thing. So I call my insurance guy and I say, hey, I need to get some insurance quickly. The guy says, your timing is perfect. He says, I can get you a two-year policy for 600 per year. Do you want to do that? And I said, yeah, that's pretty good. 600 per year for my insurance. Yeah, okay. I got to pay you two years in advance. And then you're going to go ahead and give me the insurance, right? <clears throat> so um, he, he says, yeah. So what happens? I go ahead and I reach into my wallet. I write the guy check, whatever, for 1200 So now I'm showing that my cash went from 117 to 115800 and I go ahead and I debit the asset prepaid insurance. Okay. Prepaid insurance is what is an asset because I paid for two years in advance. And so I go ahead and to increase the asset, I debit it. I post that debit to the left. And now I know that I have that future economic benefit of that insurance coverage for the next two years prepaid the word prepaid is telling you that what it's telling you hey you've got two years well it doesn't say in the word prepaid but it's saying you have economic benefit going forward okay now i come up and uh you know i'm sitting there in my nice building and my reputation is getting around that i throw a pretty good dj gig whatever and uh, so this high roller walks in and says hey look I want to hire you. It's, it's, it's July 1st. And I want to hire you to do a event per month for me over the next year. So I want you to do an event in July, say a July 4th thing. I want you to do an event in August, September, October, November. And our big one will be in December. And then in the next year, I want you to go ahead and perform for me in January, February, March, April, May, June, 12 months. And um, he says, and here I'll pay you 10,000 per month. So here's $120,000. Are you going to take that money? Yes. Yeah. He's going, wow. Okay. This guy wants to, you know, book me for 12 months. So he gives me 120,000. So we sign a contract and I say, okay, yeah, I'll perform. 120,000, <clears> my debit to cash, because you just handed me cash goes up. So my cash balance is going up pretty nicely here. And I can't credit revenue because when he handed me the money, I hadn't performed yet. So I'm like, okay, I can't take revenue. I in effect have a liability because if something happens and I can't perform, you know the guy's gonna sue me for getting that money back because I didn't perform on the deal, right? And so I may have to give that money back if for some reason I can't perform. If you're going to have to give money to somebody, you have to do what? You have to credit a liability. You have to show a liability because in effect, you're gonna have to give that money back if you don't perform, okay? So now, I'm showing what? I'm showing 120,000 of a liability now, unearned revenue. Okay. Now, notice a couple of things, guys, here in these couple of early transactions that we've been looking at in year two. Um, in one case, I hadn't gotten paid yet, but I took the revenue because I performed the service. In this case, what happened? I took the cash but I didn't book the revenue because I haven't performed yet. So what causes you to recognize what? To recognize the revenue is not the receipt of cash, it's what? The performance of the service. Look at when I paid money for my insurance. I didn't debit expense, I debited an asset, right? So what causes you to recognize an expense is not the payment of money, but the what? expiration of future economic benefit. Very important, we call that accrual accounting. That is, if you look at the description of this class, they're saying that you're gonna learn accrual accounting. By understanding this, that's what you're doing. You're understanding accrual accounting, accrual accounting. Okay, now we come over 
and we look at our DJing equipment, and, you know, it's not looking too good. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So we go to the DJ supply store and we get some DJ wipes, whatever, right? And so we gather up $24,000 of supplies. We go up to the counter and the guy looks at us and he says, Irving, huh? He says, wait a minute, aren't you DJ Pizzazz? And I said, well, yeah, matter of fact, I am. And he says, well, look, I want you to open an account here. Open an account here because I want you to always come and uh, get your DJ supplies here. Smart person, because my business is growing and he realizes, hey, this guy might have two or three other DJs working for him someday and he's gonna send them all here or whatever, right? So I do that, I open an account and the guy says, yeah, pay me later, okay? So what happens? I take the supplies home. Do I have a future economic benefit when I take those supplies back to my business? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to use them, right? So I go ahead and I debit supplies for 24000 By the way, guys, in my description here, I say supplies of 24000 are purchased. I should have said on credit or on account or something. Okay, so that description doesn't fully describe what I did here. I purchased the supplies for 24000 I take them home on credit. I take them home. I debit my supply account. My supply account is now showing twenty-four thousand, and I credit account pay a bill twenty-four thousand because I have to. Uh, I have to pay this guy later. I have a bill. He's going to send me a bill for this stuff. So I credit my account pay a bill, and I'm now showing under my liability section. I have account pay a bill of twenty-four thousand. By the way, <clears throat> you know, don't go to somebody and say, it's not account payable, it's account pay a bill. Okay, I'm saying it funny like that so that you remember it's a liability, right? Okay, <clears throat> so what happens? Now, the guy that I did that work for at the beginning of the year calls me and says, hey, uh, is it okay if I pay you um, some now and some later? I can't pay you the full 100,000. I say, yeah, he's a good customer. Sure, send me what you can. So he sends me 40,000. He owes me 100,000, right? But he sends me 40, okay? And when he sends me that 40, I debit cash and my cash account goes up. Hey, I'm getting a good cash balance now, right? And I do what? I credit my account receivable because he sent me some of the money, not all of it. He still owes me 60,000. Remember, guys, this system that we're looking at here that we're doing with these debits and credit have been around since the 12th century, okay? And in the 12th century, if you owed somebody money and you didn't pay them, guess what they did? They threw you into prison, okay? So what happens? Or they made you, you know, row a boat somewhere at the bottom of the galley or whatever it is they did to people, workhouses and all that kind of stuff. And so they invented accounting to make sure that they knew who owed them and what they owed other people, right? Because it was a big deal. So we go ahead, we credit the cash, and now we know that the guy still owes me 60000 I mean, we debit the cash, we credit the accounts receivable, and we know that the guy still owes me 60000 okay? Now, I get to the end of the year, and as I come to the end of the year, I have to make some what we call adjusting entries. I need to look and say, are there some things that I haven't really caught up yet? I have to adjust some things when you have a tie I'm doing this because you have a tie and you don't take the tie off and put it back on. You just want to adjust it because it's a little crooked. There's something that needs to be maintained. OK, so I'm going to adjust my accounts for things that have happened. So I look around and I say, oh, that guy gave me what he gave me one hundred and twenty thousand. I look and I see, oh, I performed a concert in July, August, September, October, November, December, and I haven't adjusted to show that I've earned that revenue yet, okay? So what do I do? 10,000 a month, six months, 10 times six is 60,000. So I go ahead and I do what? I credit my revenue for 60 because I have performed on that deal now. And I debit my unearned revenue for 60. When I do that and I post that, right, to increase revenue, you credit it. So I can now show that I have, where'd my revenue go? Let me move 
that up a little bit. I can go ahead and credit my revenue for 60. So now I've made 160,000 of revenue this year. I debit what? The unearned. And when I do, now it's showing that what? I still haven't earned 60,000 of that. That's the concert that I'm going to do in what? January, February, March, April, May, June of next year. So I still have to do that. So I still have unearned of 60, but I've earned 60. Now, let me ask you a quick question, guys. If you were looking at a company's financial statements, you're thinking of investing in a company, and you saw a big number for unearned revenue, would you be worried about investing with that company or would you be motivated to do so? I would be worried. Okay, why? Because they owe a lot of money. If they're not making a lot of money in order to pay their bills, wouldn't they you be? Say they're not making money to pay their bills. I got one hundred and twenty thousand dollars cash, didn't I? <clears throat> he gave me one hundred and twenty thousand dollars cash up front. Okay. So I've got money. So what are you worried about when you see a big unearned revenue number? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, I got money. No, I can thank you for, you know, it's hard. You know, the hardest thing in life is getting is getting yourself out there. You know, once you've gone ahead and you've tried something, the, the only thing that stop there's one thing that stops you from achieving your goals in life, and that is fear. OK, once you go and you do something, even if you mess it up, so what? I mean, it, so what? You know, I've gotten in this thing lately where I, I like doing karaoke. I'm just going to go ahead and share that with you. Not that you care, but I never would do karaoke. I don't want to go up there and sound like an idiot singing. And you know, I like to sing in the car. I, don't, I went ahead and I tried it and I realized that nobody lays on their deathbed and says, and I want to share something with you, my regrets. I'm sorry I sang karaoke. <laughs> okay, you know, so th that's not something. So, you know, uh, contributing and maybe, you know, it's not quite where I was going with the point. It does you no harm at all. None. Might make you feel a little warm for a second, but it's winter time, so don't worry about it. Okay, but you're going to learn from that. Okay, end of that speech. Now, what happens? <clears throat> When analysts look at that unearned revenue account where I was going with that, is they kind of like that liability because that means what? That means that you're booked into business in the future. You're so good that people are giving you money in advance to make sure that they have your services in the future. That liability, unlike maybe some others, is one that analysts like. In fact, companies often will disclose amounts of unearned revenue, but they don't call it unearned revenue on the balance sheet because they haven't received the cash yet. But they'll post a number that shows contracts amounts that they are going to eventually receive that will turn into revenue later on. They like to disclose that. So maybe this guy, we signed a two-year contract and the deal was that he gave me 120,000 up front and then he'll give me the next 120,000 July 1st of year three in this example. I could, under the accounting standards, disclose that, hey, I haven't put it on the uh, balance sheet yet because I haven't received the cash yet, but I am committed to do another 120,000 worth of business and I would maybe disclose that somewhere in my financial reports, like in my management, um, in my, um, you know, when I file with the SEC, there's places where I can put that information. Okay. Okay, good. So that's a good liability is all where I was going with that. Now we come over and we have earned that 60,000. And then we're making adjusting entries and we look and we say, oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute now. That insurance policy, it was a two-year policy. The January 1st, I signed that. It was a two-year policy and now we're at the end of year two. 
Okay, so at the beginning of year two, we're at the end of year two. So one year has expired, hasn't it? One year has expired. $1,200 for two years, that's 600 per year, right? So I go ahead and I debit now insurance expense because one year of that prepaid has expired. So I go ahead and I debit my insurance expense for 60. I credit, or well, I mean for 600. I credit what? I credit the prepaid. When I credit the prepaid and I post that, now it's showing that I have what? I have one year left on that policy because it's 600 per year. I go ahead and I debit my expense. I post a debit to expense in the um, ledger here. And now I've got this $600 expense for that one year of the prepaid insurance that has expired. Okay. Okay, good. Then what? Then I go ahead and I look at those supplies. I go to the supply closet and I had 24,000 and I count the supplies and there's only 13,000 left. That means that what? That means that 11,000 has expired, hasn't it? I've used up 11,000 supplies. I had 24,000. Johnny had 24,000 apples. He counted the apples at the end of the year and Johnny only had 13,000 left. How many apples did Johnny eat? 11,000. You go and you count the supplies. I don't know if somebody stole them. If I used them up, all I know is what? They ain't there anymore. They have expired. Okay, so 11,000 were uh, has expired because there's only 13,000 left. So I debit my supply expense, 11,000. Okay, I go ahead and I can post that in a second. I credit my supplies, my asset, 11,000. I say 13,000, 11,000. Okay, so I go ahead and when I credit supplies for 11,000, it shows that I have how much left? 13,000. How beautiful is accounting? Look at that. Through this system, I'm able to track how much I have left in supplies, right? And I go ahead. And I do what? I debit the expense for 11000 My expenses now go to 11600 Question on that. Sometimes students struggle with that one a little bit. Okay, good. Okay, then what? Then I go ahead and I look at my building. And my building isn't quite as shiny new as it was in year one. Okay, a couple of times we scratched the walls and that kind of thing. The building is depreciating. Okay. So, what happens? I want to recognize that some of the future economic benefit of that building has expired. I've used some of it up. So, I go ahead and I say, well, I paid 1.2 for the building. It's going to have a salvage value of 200,000. At the end of the 20 years, when I'm done using this building, it's going to be all beat up, but somebody will give me, I think, 200,000 for it. So I go ahead and I take 1.2, I subtract 200,000. My depreciable base is 1 million. I divide that by, what is it, 20 year life that I think that building is gonna last, whatever. And so I'm going to take depreciation of 50,000 per year for the next 20 years, okay? So at that point, I debit depreciation expense because what, 50,000 one year's worth has expired. By the way, I ignored it for year one, but 50,000 has expired here. So I go ahead and I debit my expense, 50,000. Now I got 61,600 of expenses and I credit an account accumulated depreciation. I don't credit straight to the asset account because I want people to be able to see what I originally paid for that. And then I'm going to show the accumulated depreciation as a subtract from the building account when I prepare my balance sheet so people can say, oh, I see, you paid 1.2, but it's depreciated a little bit since then. And so you have this much left of future economic benefit. Okay, so I go through, I make those adjustments, and now I'm ready to prepare my financial statements. Okay, so what's the first statement we prepare? What's the first statement we prepare? Income statement. Income statement. Good. Okay. We're going to do the speech center, guys. Good. First, we prepare the income statement. 
Why are they called the income statement? Your revenue minus expense equals net income. Good, it shows net income. How do you calculate net income? Revenue minus expenses. Good, do I have any revenue? Yes. Got the 160. Okay, so I go ahead and I prepare the financial statement is the easy part, fun part. You just simply sit here and you see what's in the ledger accounts and write them down in the form of a financial statement. So I have revenue 160, revenue minus expenses. My expenses are 61.6. So I go ahead and I subtract that. That gives me net income of 98.4. Now I'm ready to prepare my statement retain earnings. The beginning balance and retain earnings is what? 117. Now it's 117, right? So when I do my little BASE here, right? I'm going to uh, start with the 117. I bring my net income and I add it to my piggy bank, my retained earnings, right? That's our piggy bank. And then subtract. I didn't pay a dividend. You don't have to. Paying a dividend is a decision of the board directors, and some years companies will do it. Other company, uh, other years companies won't. Okay, so this year my dividend is zero. I didn't pay one. I don't have to. Okay, and so my ending balance and my retainer is two two hundred fifteen thousand four hundred. Now I can do what? Now I can prepare my balance sheet. Do I have any assets? Yeah, I got cash, equipment, building, right? So I go ahead and I start to put those down. My cash is 275,800. <clears throat> my cash is 275,800. My what? My accounts receivable, because remember the guy still owed me 60. My accounts receivable up there is 60. So I put the 60. My supplies are 13,000 that I had left. Okay. The prepaid insurance, there's 600 left of that. The equipment was 150. That's what I paid for it. The equipment, where's my 150? My equipment, where'd it go? There it is. The equipment is 150. The building, I paid what? I paid 1.2, but some of that has depreciated. So I got to show that what? I have to show that 50,000 accumulated depreciation. So I showed that and notice I put parentheses around it to show that it's a subtract from the building, right? And so I add all that up. My total assets are 1,649,400. I am now ready to uh, look at my liabilities. I have the mortgage payable, 200,000. Guys, and I'm kind of, I don't want this example to go on for hours and hours. I'm sure it's probably gone on long enough already. The 200,000 on the mortgage payable and the vehicle payable, I just didn't bother to mention paying any of that. It's okay, so this is obviously, you know, theoretical situation because I probably would have had to pay but 200 150 okay my what my account pay up bill for those supplies remember is still what is still sitting up there at 24,000 notice guys what I've used up some of the supplies but I haven't paid for it yet so I still owe the full 24 even though I've used up 11,000 of the supplies right again what causes you to recognize an expense is not that I spent money. It's that what? It's that I have expired the future economic benefit of an asset. That's what causes me to recognize an expense. Okay. And so I go ahead and I put down the 24,000. And then I um, look and I have what? My account payable for 24,000. Then I have that unearned revenue for those concerts that I still have left to do. So my unearned revenue is right here, 60,000. I go ahead and I put that in. I add those all up, 434,000 of liabilities. Notice my common stock sat here what? Sat here quietly. Nothing happened with common stock. And that's often the case. A company may not issue any more stock for a while when they're getting started. They issue that at the beginning and they go about their business and they don't issue any more stock for a while. Okay, so that sits there, a million dollars. The stock may trade on the market, but if no more money is coming into the corporation, the common stock account stays, stays there. Nothing happens to it. Okay, so that's a million. My retained earnings, I know, is how much? 
What's supposed to be the ending balance in my retained earnings? 215,400. Good, All right? So I pull that down from the statement of retained earnings, stick it in my balance sheet. And I have total uh, stockholders equity, 1.2, 1,215,400. I add to that the liabilities. And when I add those together, I'll be the balance sheet balances, okay? Why does the balance sheet balance? Because I sat there and I made sure that debits equal credits. Okay. Now I have to do my closing entries, right? Always got to do those closing entries. So I want to do what? I want to turn revenue, expense, and then income summary to zero. Dividend is already zero because I didn't pay any. So that's fine. So I go ahead, I debit revenue, I credit income summary for 160. When I debit revenue for the 160, um, the revenue account goes to zero, which is what I want. There's that debit. It goes to zero. When I credit income summary, income summary goes up to 160. Then I have to close the expense accounts. To close the expense accounts, I want them to go from 61.6 to zero. To decrease an expense account, you credit it. So I credit that 61.6. I go ahead and put that credit in there. When I do that zero, I go ahead and I do what? I debit income summary. And when I debit income summary, when I do that, now my income summary shows 98,400. Where is net income supposed to go? To what account? Retain earnings. Good, got to get it to retain earnings, right? Okay, so what do I do? I debit income summary because I need that to be zero so I can keep track of my income for next year. So I go ahead and I debit income summary for um, 98.4 right there. That turns it to zero. And then I do what? I credit the retained earnings because I have to add that. I'm retaining now another year of earning. And so I go to my retained earnings and I credit that to increase the stockholder's equity account. You credit it. And when I do, now the balance is 215400 It matches what my statement of retained earnings says and what my balance sheet is saying is retained earnings. And I close my books and everything is in harmony. And I'm now ready to start in this example, year three, and so on. Question. I have a question. So are you um, adding for the stockholders equity, are you adding the, the routine earnings from the first year to the second year? Um, is that why it went up? I, I need you to ask, ask Nance, ask that question more specifically because you said for stockholders' equity, and then you start just talking about retained earnings. Because retained oh. stockholders' equity is common stock and retained earnings, right? So you're talking about right. retained earnings? Yeah, retained earnings, the 98,000. Uh, yeah. Because uh, yeah, it that, went up. That's what I did right here. I took the beginning balance, which was the amount that was left in my retained earnings at the end of year one. And now I've added to it, beginning balance, add net income, right? 98.4? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I did. And that's how I got 215,400, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Beginning balance, think of it as the piggyback. I mean, it really doesn't get much more complicated than that, to be honest with you. And that you have a piggyback, right? You stick some money into the piggyback. Sometimes you pull some money out. Then when you put more money in, the money that was there is sitting on the bottom and you added now your income for year two, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And now then you pull out the stopper and take some money out of the piggy bank. Mm -hmm. That's the dividend. This year I didn't have a dividend, so it was zero. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And in accounting terms and terminology, if I add something to a stockholder's equity account like retained earnings, what do we say I do? Sorry, say that again. 
in accounting terminology, when I add something to a stockholder's equity account, what do I say I'm doing? What do I do to it? You're crediting. I credit it. For stockholders' equity, a credit is an add, isn't it? To increase stockholders' equity, like retain earnings, you credit it. Is that what I did? To bring it from 117 to 215, did I credit it? Yes. Yes. Question. Okay. Good work, guys. I am not going to do what I said I was going to do, which is start to look at that practice midterm for chapter two. We'll do that next time. Here's what I really need you to do. I need you to look at um, Canvas. Come on, hang on, guys. Is it me? I mean, I'm clicking on it. So what I want you to do is everybody in the studio. You see over here in chapter two, you see um, year one, year two clean. Okay, that doesn't mean it's the you know. G rated G version. What we have is a description of the accounts, and then you see the ledger over here. Okay. So, what you should be able to do on your own as an exercise is go through the same thing we just did. And um, what you could do is use the recording to read the transaction, go ahead and do the journal entry, post it to the ledger, and then hit play on the recording if you want and see if you got it right if you need help if not just go ahead and do the same thing go through the whole process and then prepare the income statement the statement return earnings this balance sheet pulls another piece of paper off to the side and if you can do that okay there will be nothing on the exam that you won't be able to handle because what is in this example is what i'm going to test you on for your first exam OK, so that would be a good exercise for you over the weekend, et cetera. And then we'll get to these practice midterm uh, in uh, chapter uh, for chapter two at the start of next week. OK, question. All right, guys, good work again. I will see you on Tuesday. Keep up the uh, keep up the good work. OK, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Professor. Uh, I have a 